Hello and welcome to this practice dedicated to any feeling of sadness, grief, um, depressive state even. And we're going to start a little bit differently today in this practice. So starting seated with our arms as an extension of ourselves. And we're going to reach the arms up eventually into a wide V shape here. Closing the eyes, rolling the shoulders down on our backs spreading the fingers wide and just noticing what's there. Just taking a moment to become very aware and allowing for whatever is to be how it is to remain. Just staying pre present with what is and acknowledging that what you are feeling is real and it's true. If you want, you can make this into a little bit of a movement even, swaying from side to side a couple of times, trying to bring some mobility into your body, into your thoughts. And then staying still for another breath before you lower your arms down onto your knees. Taking a deep breath, aligning your vertebrae, stacking them on top of each other. Good. And then exhaling, starting to massage your ears. So we're just going to pull the ears a little bit and giving our ears a little bit of love. Which can be a funny movement already, so maybe it does make you laugh. But most of all, it's a very calming thing to do. Uh, vagus nerve is running along these areas. Take a moment just to feel the after effects. And then connect your left middle finger with your navel and your right middle finger with your forehead and drop your head. We're gonna start to lift ourselves up from here physically. So from a very rounded shape, you can start to feel your upper palm rising so that you're slowly elevating your spine, elevating your gaze and lengthening up here and feel the connection of your belly with your head, with your mind. Just connecting again the parts, intuition, knowledge. And staying as tall as you can here for about three, four, five breaths even. Creating space in your body. And slowly allowing your hands to come down, rolling shoulders up and down. Just making sure you're not holding tension here in your neck. And we're going to move on from here into seated with our left foot on the mat, reaching through the left knee with the left arm and lifting that hand outside of the knee and then coming into the opposite shape with the right arm. So imagining like a windmill, sh windmill shape with your arms, right palm is moving down, left palm is moving up and you try to widen the front, widen the chest as your seat is heavy. Now lean on to your right and hold on to the leg from the outside. Pull the left leg back. Behind you come into what's called deer pose. We're going to do three dynamic twists with our hands on our hips away from the back knee. Good. Moving towards the right from here. Inhale and exhale. And then from here slowly crawling forward into a forward fold. Just releasing the hips for a moment and just remaining on the forearms and as you press forearms down again have a feeling of slightly elevating yourself here out of this shape widening the front drawing shoulder blades together at your back and then full elevation back into your seat lean onto your right and hold on to the left knee pull it into your chest and then extend the leg and balance here on your right arm forearm now maybe you can bring the left foot on top of the right thigh for a lotus or you can just lift the foot and reach the top palm, the right one back behind you, sorry, the left one back behind you. You're going to follow the palm with your gaze, taking a breath here. And then release back into your seat. Now maybe with your right foot on top of your knee. Lift your hips up and then pull your arm up and cactus the arm into your back bend. Again, widening the chest. So we always want to create a little bit of space and sad or depressive states we tend to kind of curl forward and now we want to physically open in order to mentally open good and then from here moving right to the other side bring your left knee down right knee up reach through the right knee from the inside windmill pose right palm up left palm down feeling the balance here between both sides 
ahead and trying to widen the front, leaning back a little bit here, reaching the gaze up instead of down, right? So trying to look up consciously without straining your neck. Set the foot down and pull it back eventually. Right foot moves back into a deer shape now. Hands on your hips and you're going to twist towards the left three times with your breath. Inhale to twist, exhale to come back to center. Hips stay heavy. After the third round, you're going to move your arms forward, leaning into your deer forward fold. And you can start with your head low and then slowly have that feeling again of elevation, of rolling up. So you're widening the chest and you're looking up a little bit with your head. Staying in a comfortable position here, hips heavy. Take about two, three breaths here. And then come back all the way, lean up all the way into a tall seat and lean onto your left side eventually, pulling the top knee into your chest. And then extending that top leg out, flexing the foot, really active foot here now, leaning on your left, but push yourself out of your shoulder and see if you can press the bottom foot onto the thigh. You can even hold the thigh from the inside, curling up with your top hand. Uh, see if you can gaze up, maybe gaze down for a moment just to stretch the neck. Creating space, balancing, and slowly making your way down. Now we're going to come back into that deer pose with the top foot on the top knee, but we're going to pull the right knee back behind us. Lean into your left arm and reach your hips up, come into a back bend. See if you can hold this space and then pull the top elbow down a little bit for a cactus shape. Maybe gaze to the floor. Good. Keep the front spacious. And then make your way back down softly. And we're going to move on from here into all four. So crossing your shins, bringing your knees onto the mat, your hands right under your shoulders. Spread your fingers wide. Take an inhale to widen the chest and exhale to round the spine, mobilizing the whole of the spine now. Bringing a little bit of movement, a little bit of opening into your body. Following your breath. And then come onto your forearms from here. Lift your arms and see if you can hook your thumbs under your chin as you rock forward and backward a couple of times here. Lifting your feet as you rock forward. And bringing them down as you rock backward. Inhale to come forward. Exhale to lean back. Widen the chest. Now we're going to start to bring our hands away from our face, spreading the fingers as if we're trying to lift a veil. And hold here. And then bring the forearms down, bring the feet down. Maybe bring them a little wider and sit back into a child's pose. Lifting onto your fingertips so you feel the stretch in your armpits. And then drop your arms down. Look under the left armpit for a moment, twisting open to the left. And then lift the right armpit. Look under the right side and bring everything back down to center. Drop your hips heavy. Take a breath at center. And then lean back forward. Find all fours and step your right foot in between your hands. You're going to climb onto your front knee, lean into your front hip, pull the navel in steady base. And the right hand is going to go onto your lower back. The left hand is going to twist you on your right knee so that you can move your torso a little bit towards the right. And you're going to look over your right shoulder. Leaning into your front hip, keeping your front foot soft. Navel is moving to the right. And you keep breathing as you bring your right hand even further, connecting the left palm now on top of that right palm. And then extend your arms behind you and widen the chest to the ceiling. Interlacing fingers. Take a breath there. Hands back. All the way back into all fours. Take a cat cow. Finding your breath specifically the exhale and come back to neutral step the left foot between your hands and climb onto the front thigh pull your navel in sit low into your hip 
Right hand on the front thigh, left hand behind the back. Push yourself a little bit further into the hip opener, gently. Knee stays over the ankle. And then bring the hand behind and connect your palms on your right hip. Come into a slight back bend as you start pulling both hands interlaced behind you. Look up towards the ceiling. Good. Lifting your gaze. Taking a deep breath. And then slowly lower your hands back down. Step it back. All fours. Take one breath in motion or just in stillness. Making sure again you find you've complete the exhale. Right? We don't want to hold the breath. Breath is bringing us into the present moment. Breath is helping us avoid feelings of anxiety. And then start releasing the head here in your down dog. Walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Come into a soft forward fold, Uttanasana. Bend your knees and start rolling up again, starting with this elevation, slowly moving from the bottom to the top. The head and the shoulders are the last thing to come up and then widen yourself. Open the arms and then lift the fingers up towards the ceiling, creating space now. Good. And then take a slight twist towards the left. Look over the left shoulder, back to center. Bend your knees as you move. And do the same to the right side. Back to center. Again, lift your arms and then slowly fold forward with this long spine. And then drop everything. Inhale, half forward fold. Lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Step back, downward facing dog. Good. And make your way into a plank pose from here. Drop your knees and lower down all the way onto your belly. Taking about three deep breaths in and out your belly, noticing your connection to the mat, grounding you, maybe even a sense of safety, calm. Notice what's there. Give yourself a moment just to be aware and allow for everything to be as is. And then bring your hands next to your chest. Lift your left foot up, left leg lifts, and lift your upper body, keeping your chin towards your chest. So try not to look up so much. Bend the left knee and see if you can move it over to behind the right leg. Now you're coming onto your left side and you're lifting the right knee into the chest the top knee into the chest and then extend the leg out lifting the leg lifting the arm and opening a little bit towards the ceiling Good. step the leg behind and look down holding onto your bottom shoulder moving back down onto your belly take a breath in your swings Good. and then come back down and lift your upper body lift your right leg up keep that tension the right leg is super strong the upper body is long and spacious Take a breath, bend into the right knee and start, see if you can roll over onto your left side now, sitting on your left, reaching for the knee and pull the knee into your chest, inhale, and as you exhale, extend your arm and your leg, create space from the bottom to the top again, elevate now your arm and your leg, your foot and your hand up, press yourself out of your bottom elbow and hold here, holding the tension, Step the foot behind and then give yourself a hug. Hug the left shoulder. Good. Come back onto your belly. With your next inhale, back to all fours and then slowly from here into puppy pose. So in puppy pose, the hips stay right over the knees and the chest is melting down towards the mat. Arms are long. Heart space is open and receptive. So this is a passive back bend. And we're going to take about three breaths here, just letting the heart melt down towards the mat, just allowing to stay open, moving forward into all fours. And then crawl your hands towards your knees, come into kneeling from here. Lift your arms again over the sides, creating space to all sides. And then again, this little twist, this little swaying motion with the upper body towards the left, towards center, and to the right. Good. Connecting your palms, lifting the gaze, and then releasing the hands to behind your back. 
interlacing the fingers and now leaning forward into rabbit pose. See if you can bring the crown of your head to the mat and maybe tapping your hips from behind as you tap your feet to the mat. And this is harder than it actually looks. Tapping is a wonderful thing to do to open energy channels in your body, just to open up even the fascia a little bit. Good, maybe give yourself a little massage for the lower back and then come back up. Come to seated on your heels for a moment. Take a breath and then move into a forward fold from here. At the bottom of your mat, drop everything again, soften your knees and start rolling up again. Lifting from the bottom to the top, consciously extending yourself up towards the ceiling. Lifting up and then bring your palms in front of you, coming into a balance next. So we're going to bring the weight into the right foot, lifting the left leg behind us and see if you can bring the left ankle into the knee crease as you bend the right leg. Hook your fingers in front of you and bring them behind your head elbows wide. Lean back into your fingers. And then see if you can extend the back leg behind you coming into cross-legged and twisting towards the right. Front knee is slightly bent. Back knee can be slightly bent. Your torso is rotating towards the right side and your elbows are moving back. Come back up. Lift the left knee towards the chest and set the foot down. Right to the other side. Hook your fingers in front of you and bring the right ankle behind the left knee. Elbows wide, press your head back against your hands. And then step the right foot behind the left, bend your knees a little bit and then rotate your upper body towards the left this time. Keep your elbows wide. Take a breath here, leaning your hips back, pressing into all four corners of your feet. And then start releasing the leg. Step your feet together and just soften your body for a moment. You can shake it. You can just roll it out, whatever feels appropriate. And make your way to the front of your mat again. Bend your knees and take a big step back with the right foot. Open into your warrior two, left foot in front. Take your arms behind you and bring both palms onto the left hip and sink a little bit lower into the front knee. And you can look over your back shoulder, feeling a stretch in your neck, most likely. And then as you straighten the front leg, interlace fingers and pull the knuckles behind you and lean forward now over that front leg. So it's a little rotation around the waist, around the hip here. You could maybe lift your front toes to activate your front leg and then lean back into your warrior two with your hands on your left hip. Sorry, on your right hip, in fact. And then lean forward again and pull the knuckles back. Come back up, hands on your hip, sit into the front knee, twist and lean. Good, and then from here, come back all the way, parallel your feet, keep your fingers interlaced behind the back, and then slowly move them onto your front thighs, bend your knees, soften your upper body down, you can turn the palms forward or backward as you fold into your prasarita shape, prasarita padottanasana, dropping your head, softening the neck. Just hanging here for a moment. Again, the weight is in all four corners of the feet, so most likely you have to bring it forward a little bit. Now we're going to elevate our chest again. Lean a little bit lower into the hip, wide in the front, and exhale round. Do that again. Inhale, lean back and open front. Exhale, fold forward. One more time. Inhale to widen. Exhale to release. Hands go back onto your hip and you start reaching back up into standing from here. Moving right into the other side. So now the right foot is turning out. Both hands onto the front hip. The right hip. Lean your ear back towards the back shoulder. Slight stretch for the neck. Opening here. Maybe look over the back shoulder and then lean a little further into the hip as you inhale, extend the knuckles behind you, straighten front leg and fold over the front leg. And as you can see, I'm not going very far, right? Hands on the outer hip, sink into the front knee, gaze back. Inhale, straighten front leg, rotate your hips to the front and fold. This is a very nice opener, a very dynamic, gentle opener for a lot of parts of your body, in fact. 
sit into the front knee and then stretch knuckles back over the front leg. Nice. Good. Come back to center. Widen the arms now. Lift yourself up here. Power pose in a star shape. Maybe come back to that idea of receiving like we did seated, the wide, wide V shape with our arms. Notice what's there and then slowly release your arms down. Step your feet together. Come to the front of your mat. Reach your arms up one more time. And then slowly melting down from here into a squat and into seated. Reach your arms forward and then bring them on your thighs. And we're just going to extend one leg forward at a time, leaning a little bit with our shoulder into that leg from side to side. Core your arms behind you onto your forearms. You're going to open into Baddha Konasana, butterfly pose with your legs. Widen your chest now. Maybe drop the head, but most likely this is going to be not ideal for your neck. So I actually prefer to look forward. See if you can lift your feet into your chest and then extend the legs up, heels touch. Bend the knees out. Lift the feet up. Bend the knees out. Extend the legs up. Good. Bend them back in and then bring the heels down. Come back into the butterfly. And make your way onto your back here. You can place your left hand on your chest and your right hand on your belly. Just again to have an idea of that connection. Not only from the breath, but also the heart and belly connection. And then see if you want to touch your forehead a couple of times. And kind of gently rubbing your forehead from the center to the outside so you're kind of flattening the surface a little bit and allowing for your thoughts to become a little bit softer and for your head to become a little wider and feel spacious in your mind. Let your arms reach under your thighs. A little bit of support for your thighs here. You can have your palms facing up or down. If you do have cushions close to you, you can slide those under your knees for more support in your Baddha Konasana. In fact, I prefer to do that. You can rest your head on a pillow or a blanket. And then take a few moments here just to release in your Shavasana. If your hands don't like this shape, you can come into cactus instead. Once again, connecting to the earth underneath you. Connecting to the support. And then whenever you're ready, start to deepen your breath again. You don't have to come out just yet. You can stay for as long as you like in this shape. Hold your knees together when you're ready and roll onto your left side. Press yourself up into seated. And we're gonna end this class with the last moment of awareness. Noticing the space we just created. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a beautiful day. Namaste.